Okay, um, I am calling the meeting to order. Recording in progress. And we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, we are going um, to start with the minutes approval, um, and then the only question I have, since two of you weren't at that meeting, and Charlie and I are the only ones, perhaps we, we just push this down, the, down in a month. Um, right. For the minutes, for the March, mm -hmm. the March meeting and the, so we'll just push that to, to the April meeting. Um, and then I'm going to propose that we make a change to the order of the agenda and that we start with public comment. Um, does anybody object to that? No. Is okay with that? Okay. So we are gonna, we're going to start with public comment because uh, I know we have several people here to do that. Um, the process for public, here, for public comment is if you'd come up one at a time, if you'd state your name. Um, and, uh, and then make your comments, if you'd keep your comments to somewhere between two and three minutes, because we have several people to comment. Um, and just, again, you're directing your comments to the board. Um, this is your opportunity to make comments. It's not meant to be a back and forth, um, but we, uh, we appreciate your coming. Um, so whoever would like to start, come on up. If you just stand over here. And actually, we have a microphone here that is probably where you should speak into. We can put that up on the, yeah, maybe if you put it right up there. Would anyone like to make public comment? One of the things is I'm a latecomer in all of this. Can you? Can I just ask that you speak oh, into the microphone? So little thing. I'll remember. Yes, that little thing. thing. You can pull it down. Okay, my size. There you go. Uh, what I'd like to know is what is this all about? Can you uh, can you state your name, please? Oh, Lottie Leocadia Kittner. Thank you. Village resident, many years. Uh, I I just heard about this going on because I'm without a I'm. A, my life is really turned upside down, and I'm lo I've got so much on my, I'm on overload. And so I kind of sort of put you guys in the back burner, and um, somebody comes to me and says, Lottie, what do you think of this? And I says, what? Shades of old times. Because uh, I've been here since, my husband was here since the 1950s. Started Linden Acres, but the point here is, I'm hearing different people say they're not sure what is. I read the the letter about what the things are. I said it doesn't spe specify too much. I can don't. You, can you share with us what you're referring to? Yes. Uh, are they internally lit signs, mm -hmm. or what does does that mean? If a light is on the outside of the sign, it's okay. Yes. Okay. Now neon signs are out. So a, 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 a sign that um, is lit from the inside is, is not allowed in the code. Open signs? At this moment, in the code, they are not allowed. When? Since when? This law or the previous? Because um, I've been through this my, before. My understanding is that it's been in the code for a very long time like more than 20 years, more than 30 years. I, I can't tell you beyond that. I don't, well, I don't know. As I said, my, my husband's been here since the 50s, and I got here in 72. And uh, I don't know whether what was going on is everybody ignored the law, uh, but I mean, open signs are important. So how, what kind, how do they illuminate the signs? So perhaps what um, this is an opportunity for public comment. What I hear you say is that you would like to have the opportunity to have an open sign. Oh, I think it's your a business. vital. 
and um, and well, appreciate you hearing that the in the code it it is rather clearly stated that internally illuminated signs are not allowed. The way to change that is for we as a board to propose a change um, and to discuss and to have public comment and to make that change. All right, wait, wait. was this established by complaint or by decision? Are we so garishly illuminated that somebody is complaining? I, um, it is my understanding that there was a complaint. Um, a complaint. I don't, I, I don't, I, okay. I, 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 I don't know all the details. What, and the reality is, it's, it is technically not allowed in the code. Um, I will also say that this is not the moment to debate and decide. I appreciate very much your coming in, and I hear you that you don't agree. Um, does, and that does, you are any, requesting are you, any of you business people you are requesting of us that we consider making a change absolutely plus other things but this is where I'm starting because I'm not quite sure I understood what I was given a piece of paper that says da 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 da, da. I said this is insane we've been there done that I'm surprised that it's not in the law I, anyway uh Thank you very much for coming, and we appreciate your oh, comments. I wish I could talk for another half hour on the other things, but I'll leave it up. Well, please do come back. I'd appreciate hearing them. Well, I, I, as I said, I just, I'm so overloaded that I haven't got time to think. And uh, Feel free to send me an email or give me a call or come see me separately if you'd like. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> Next. Hi, my Hi. name is Arlene Harkins and I own the Historic Village Diner in Red Hook. Um, so I, I understand that you're not knowledgeable of maybe all the situations, but supposedly I'm the one that got the first complaint letter because of the neon in, my, in the diner. Well, as you know, the diner is historical, so that's fortunately a, a way out for me that way also. And it's been there um, between 75 and 78 years on that site, also with signage in there being open. My point is um, I have uh, testimonies from the uh, historical landmarks that said that we should be exempt from that. And we also have from the neon, which the complaint was against the neon emitting mercury and everything else. They don't do that anymore. These neons are um, helpful. You know, they're not hurtful to the human being. All the toxins that are in the neons also are in the air that we breathe all, every day. So that's that. The, my point, too, is to help the rest of the businesses here in Red Hook. There is really no substantial reason why we can't have an open sign on. We put it on in the morning, we shut it off at night. Um, I don't think that it's uh, a good idea not to because when people drive by our businesses, they don't see that, that they're open. A flag is one thing, but I think a flag is more distra uh, distracting than, you know, waving in the breeze that somebody's going to look and may, you know, cause an accident or something than a sign that's permanent in there and not doing anything, really not doing anything wrong to hurt anybody. So I would like to, um, if you need, I can forward you those two things from for the neon gentleman that's been in the business, his family's been in the business for over 100 years and then also um, from the uh, historical thing. But I don't feel that because one person is trying to take it out on me that everyone else in the village here should be chastised either. Um, the law was not in effect. I looked at the other one till 2016. So, excuse me, a lot which, of- Which law are you uh, referring to? I don't to? know, the violation about the, uh, let's see here. A, they used the floodlights or illumination signs or whatever. Um, it said or 2016 or so. I think it. I think we need to progress, not regress. Uh, you just put in a sewer system to make the village progress for everyone, and I think that we need to do this. Um, that you need to pass the 
uh, whatever you call it, so that we can all still be here and stay here. Because things are, I mean, look, I mean, look around. We're all fighting to keep our businesses open. Nobody wants to work anymore. You know, everybody's doing double duties with things. And if you take the, you make us take the signs down or whatever, that's going to cause a, a big detriment for all of us. Thank you very much. And I would Thank appreciate you. if please do either send or leave yeah. a copy. I'd okay. appreciate it. Alrighty. Thank you. And the, uh, the way from if it's an email, mayor at redhooknyvillage.org. Okay, I'll write that down. Thank you. Next. Come on up. I just, have just speak into the microphone and no, no, keep, come on up. Um, okay. State your name. Michael Ussolini. Mm -hmm. I have the natural food store. I've been there 25 years. Ben has been there 30 years. Taste Buds, I don't know if Dan's here. He's been here 25 years together. And with this lady here, we've been here 150 years. I only have one question. Well, I have two questions. And it just needs a simple yes or no answer. Do you know you're hurting the businesses by doing this? So this is your opportunity for public comment. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing you say is that you don't agree. Um, it is in our village code that illum internally illuminated signs are not allowed. Um, and what I hear you say is that we, the board, should consider making a change. Yes. And we absolutely appreciate you being here, and we appreciate your perspective. We appreciate your business, and, and thank you very much for, for coming. Clearly, it matters, and I get it. Okay. You're quite welcome, and I hope that it, I hope we get like, like uh, when you go to court, and you get a stay instead of, <laughs> instead of having to take it off and, until hopefully you revive it. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. My name is Ben Kiki. I own the Village Pizza. Mike wasn't around 40 years ago when I opened. <laughs> so he was off a little bit on the time. Um, open signs are important to our businesses. Uh, I'd like the board to take into consideration amending the law. Um, I've tried to find out from, uh, I think it's Mr. Clark and his secretary, what year this law went into effect. I know that in the 70s and 80s, Red Hook had numerous bars. And I would imagine, I was not here at the time, but I would imagine they had neon signs. My question to the board is, what year did that go into effect? Um, I'm sure in the 70s, they wouldn't have worded the law internally illuminated signs. They would have said neon signs. Um, like I say, I've been here for 40 years just wanting to know when the law went into effect and whether or not a person can get grandfathered in. And, but the rest of the businesses, we're all here trying to make a living. You know, I've seen this town go from very bustling at times to very quiet at times. And I think if businesses prospered, that would be good for everyone. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for the quality of your pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for all that you do for the village. Uh, I know you do quite a bit, and uh, I probably only know the half. So thank you, and thank you for your comments. We appreciate it. Anybody else? Going once? That's okay. We'll try and make it easy. <laughs> so my name is Robert Chang, C-H-E-N-G. My parents run the Golden Walk. I also have an issue with the sign. I was just wondering if it could be amended. Thank you. Appreciate the comment. See, that wasn't so hard. Anybody else? And we thank you. I, uh, I'll just take this opportunity, since you're all here, to thank you all for the businesses that you run here in the village. You do make the village run. 
Um, and we are very grateful for that. And we will take your comments into consideration. And if you would like to know um, immediately what we're doing, you, you, know, let, you can leave your email address and I'd be happy to send you an email when we, um, but certainly with this level of, of engagement and interest, we will certainly take up, take up this, uh, this issue right away. So thank you very much. Anyone else before I close public comments? Feel free to stay for the public hearing regarding the budget, if you'd like. Um, so that's, uh, I'm closing public hearing. Is there anyone on, is there anyone on Zoom? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna close public comment for now. And now I need a motion to open the public hearing for the 23-24 budget. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Charlie. I need a second. I'll second. Thank you, Kim. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the public hearing for the 2023-2024 budget is now open. Um, there are copies of the budget up here um, for those who would be interested in taking a look. Um, the, oh gosh. Dot to budget, here it is. Um, Thank you very yes. Much. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you. This is what democracy looks like. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's them coming service. in the first place. Um, so the key information related to the budget is the general fund budget does. Um, actually, I'm not sure <laughs> they should care about the budget. Um, um, the tax, we are within the tax cap, um, and actually there will be a reduction in the tax rate, um, and the general fund budget is proposed to be $2,187,320. Um, that's for the general fund budget, and then for the water fund budget, it's 556100 The key note there is that there is no increase in the water rates. Um, and then our sewer fund is, uh, the budget is $340,965. And part of what that includes is um, the uh, capital fees as well as the operation and maintenance fees um, because the sewer is now fully functional. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Is there anyone who would like to make a comment? Anybody, have, you guys have any questions here on the board? No. Nope. Related to the budget? Um, I guess I'll just highlight a couple of things that I know we talked about in the workshop, but um, we have just a couple of things as it relates to revenue in the general fund. We have uh, a new, new contract with the um, Tivoli, the village of Tivoli for police, both patrol and uh, court services. Um, and we will have a new contract with the school district for um, SRO services, and we continue on with our contract with the town for um, patrol and court services. Um, under the expense side, probably the couple of items to highlight is um, there are, um, there is funding in the budget for a software program called Lexa, Lexapro, if I say poll, thank you, Lexapoll, <laughs> sorry, I get that wrong, um, which is, an, which is a, a software package to manage our police um, policies and procedures. And it also um, is a service that will make sure that we are um, always up to date with our policies and procedures based on current law. Um, and then the other is we have $15,000 in the budget for um, planning, uh, a planning consultant to help us work on some zoning revisions. Um, and um, I guess that's really the, those are the key highlights. Um, and while we plan for a snowy winter, we don't necessarily hope for one. Um, and then in the water budget, again, there's no increase in the, in the water rate. Um, and otherwise, it's, uh, 
relatively standard um, budget. Nothing particularly jumps out in terms of differences. Um, one thing that we have, um, and, and Jen Kavanaugh has been working hard on, is uh, verifying that our water meters are reading properly, and the meters are reading properly, but some of the some of the heads that communicate out the information have not been reading properly, um, and so we are working working to um, get to solve those issues um, and uh, and make sure that we are properly charging everyone for the water that they are using, and then the sewer the sewer budget. This is our best estimate based on what we know, and we will be learning an awful lot this coming year in terms of what it costs us to run a sewer system. Um, and so uh, that'll be, uh, again, this is based on what we know. We did do a, um, we put out a bid for the sludge um, hauling and, remo and removal, and so that it's based on those, um, those numbers, but the quantity we don't really know yet, so um, we hope that what we've put in is conservative. Um, no questions still? No, nothing at this time. No public comment? Questions? Okay, then I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you, Steve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Public hearing for the budget is closed. Um, we now have a resolution, which is resolution number six. Oh. Uh, whereas the Board of Trustees has received and reviewed the, the tentative budget and held a public hearing on same. Whereas funding lines and expense lines have been developed, reviewed, and established in board workshop meetings to reflect income projections and expenses from trending in history. Whereas the village's budget has three areas, general fund, water fund, and sewer fund. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the resulting general fund budget will be within the New York State Controller formula for the tax cap and be a reduction in the tax rate. Uh, the general fund budget will be $2,187,320. And be it further resolved, the water fund budget and the sewer fund budget will remain as listed in the tentative budgets, water at 556100 and sewer at 340965 and those general fund, water fund, and sewer fund budgets are hereby adopted with the treasurer to be fully advised and authorized to proceed accordingly. Um, I need a motion. So moved. Thank you, Charlie. I need a second. Second. Thank you, Kim. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, thank you. So the budget has been passed. That is, uh, that is exciting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next, we now have a public hearing on a video conferencing uh, resolution. What's that? Although not necessary. Oh, because it's not a local law. That is true. Um, is there anyone here who would like to make a comment as it relates to the video conferencing uh, resolution? And there's no one on, on Zoom. So we will not do a public hearing um, because this is a resolution. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and do this resolution. Since we're here, this will be resolution number seven. And this is related to allowing video conferencing um, participation by um, board members. So whereas by passing chapter 56 of the laws of 2022, uh, the New York State Legislature amended section 103 of the open meetings law, whereas chapter 56 adds section 103-A permitting the Board of Trustees to authorize its members to attend meetings by video conferencing under extraordinary circumstances. Whereas Section 103-A2A uh, requires the Board of Trustees to adopt a resolution following a public hearing. Uh, so we should have the public hearing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, uh, my apologies, still learning on the job here. So we are going to have a public hearing. Uh, I need a motion to open the public hearing regarding the resolution on video conferencing. Motion to open the hearing. Thank you, Steve. Second? I'll second that. Thank you, Charlie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have now opened the public hearing. Any comments? Um, do you guys have any comments on, uh, you're welcome to ask questions as well. Um, the purpose of this uh, resolution is, um, this is required by the new section of the open meetings law. 
um, by having this resolution and passing this resolution, it will allow um, basically a member of the board to be at a different location. We need to have a quorum in, the, in person in the space uh, where the public is allowed to be. Um, and if we have a quorum, then some, an additional person can zoom in um, and attend and participate and vote in the meeting. Okay. Is, I yeah. do have a question. Is there any advance notice needed if said board member is going to video conference in? Yes. Um, however, as you might imagine, because it's extraordinary circumstances, if it is something that happens at the last minute, it can also be accepted. Um, it is required except for, you know, if you get sick the day before, but you're well enough to Zoom, um, you, can, you can make that request. Any other uh, questions or comments? Okay. Uh, and I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Thank you, Charlie. Second? Second. Thanks, Steve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the public hearing is now closed. Now, um, I will present the resolution itself. I will not read the part that I've already read. Um, Section 103-A2 allows for hybrid meetings by requiring that a minimum number of members are present to fulfill the public body's quorum requirement in the same physical location or locations where the public can attend. Section 103A2C requires that members be physically present at any such meetings unless such member is unable to be physically present at any such meeting location due to extraordinary circumstances, including disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities, or any other significant or unexpected factor or event which precludes the member's physical attendance at such meeting. In accordance with section 103-A2D, any members attending by video conference must uh, excerpt during, accept during um, executive session be heard, seen, and identified while the meeting is being conducted, including but not limited to any motions, proposals, resolutions, and any other matter formally discussed or voted upon. Uh, this section, section G, requires that any meeting where a member attends by video conference be recorded, posted to the Board of Trustees webpage within five business days and transcribed upon request. Section H requires that members of the public be permitted to attend and participate, if authorized, in any meeting by video conference when a member attends by video conference. Be it, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees authorizes its members who experience an extraordinary circumstance as described above and further defined by any rules or written procedures later, to, later adopted, to attend meetings by video conference as long as a quorum of the members attend in person at one or more locations open to the public, as long as the member can be seen, heard, and identified while the open portion of the meeting is being conducted, and as otherwise permitted under Chapter 56 of the Laws of 2022. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees shall create written procedures further governing its use of video conferencing by its members in compliance with Chapter 56 of the Laws of 2022. Um, I need a motion to accept the resolution. So moved. Thank you, Kim. A second? I'll second. second. Oh. I, think, I think Steve was first on that. <laughs> sure. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now, we also have... Um, we have uh, the model procedures for video conferencing. And we have a resolution to accept those, which is here somewhere. Yeah, I might. Thank you. Um, so the model procedures um, basically restate several of the items that were in the original proposal saying that a quorum must be physically present. Um, just identifies that the, the term extraordinary circumstances includes disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities, and any other significant or unexpected factor or event which precludes attending in person. Um, ah, here, here's the section, Kim. Um, if a member is unable to be physically present and wishes to participate by video conferencing from, from a private location due to extraordinary circumstances, the member must notify the mayor no later than four business days prior to the scheduled meeting in order for proper notice to the public be given. 
if extraordinary circumstances present themselves on an emergent basis, within four days of a meeting, the Board of Trustees shall update its notice as soon as practicable to include that information. If it is not practical for the practicable for the Board of Trustees to update its notice, the Board of Trustees may reschedule its meeting. Um, the per person who is not in physical attendance shall not count toward quorum. Um, and the minutes will indicate um, if someone was not there in person. Um, and the recordings will be presented, will be posted. Um, and the person needs to be available. And that these um, procedures will be posted on our website, which we will do subsequent to this meeting. Um, and so the, sorry? Right to your right. Ah, thank you. And so this is resolution number eight. Whereas the Board of Trustees of the Village of Red Hook adopted a resolution authorizing the use of video conferencing under extraordinary circumstances at its April 10th, 2023 meeting. Whereas said resolution required the adoption of procedures consistent with the requirements of Public Officers Law 103-A. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby adopts the model procedures. Remember, video conferencing, a copy of which is annexed uh, here too. I need a motion to accept this resolution, to pass this resolution. So moved. Thank you, Steve. I need a second. Second. Thank you, Kim. Um, and I'll just make the comment that these are model video conferencing procedures that actually came from the state. So we, we have not created these on our own. Um, these very much follow the state uh, guidance. Um, and also, just to point out, we do have a, um, a board member who has, uh, has some reasons to be at home that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and so this will give her an opportunity to particip participate. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Next. Um, actually, next I will um, point out that um, we have a new village resident, um, Trustee Kiarval. As you may or may not have noticed, um, her belly was a little large of late, and uh, it is now no longer. She had her baby on Saturday. Um, so... We look forward to her joining us at some point when she can um, via, via Zoom. Um, so congratulations and official congratulations to Mel Korka on the birth of her third child. Uh, okay, next, um, under regular business, we have election expenses. Jen, you wanna take it away? As you see in your packet, um, the election expenses for this year were $452.37. Appreciate a motion to accept those expenses. And just to um, to clarify, um, we had eight, sorry we had eight hundred dollars in our budget, so we are well under what we had budgeted. Um, may I have a motion to accept the expenses for the election? So moved. Thank you, Charlie. I need a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, and, and thank you to Jen. Uh, I think the whole election ran very smoothly, and so thank you for all your efforts on that. Okay, the next item is a resolution regarding um, engagement letter for Mackie Butts and Wise, which is our... Um, just a motion. Well, Labor attorney. someday we'll understand the difference between the two. Um, I know, I have it here somewhere. Steve's gonna bail me out, thank you. We're just gonna take this here. Um, hang on, I think there's a motion. Oh, is, no, there isn't a motion. Okay, so we have, um, what I am asking is for a motion to, um, accept the letter of engagement from back Mackie Butts and Wise. Um, we use Mackie Butts and Wise, specifically um, Brooke Youngworth, for our labor attorney. And this is a letter of agreement um, for 2023. 
What's that? Sorry, it is Whalen. It used to be Mackie Butts and Wise. David Wise retired, and now it's Rich Whalen. So my apologies, thank you. <laughs> Actually, it's not, it's, it's Kara Whalen. That's a different Whalen. Um, thank you. So Mackie Butts and Whalen, um, may I have a motion to accept this letter of engagement? I have a question. Absolutely. Um, well. Well, let me do it this way. How about if I'll make the motion, I need a second, and then we have discussion. I'll second. Thank you, Charlie. Yes. Is this, um, noticing this has laid it out in regards to, based on an hourly rate, is this to not have as a retainer for our labor attorney? Correct. We don't have, we don't have a retainer with our labor attorney um, because we only use them as needed, which is not, not always on a regular basis. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. And then we also have a Dutchess County Shared Services Procurement Assistance Program. Um, I'm looking for a motion to authorize me to sign this agreement. What this does is it gives us the ability to uh, participate in the procurement assistance program that the county offers. It does not require us to use their services, but it gives us the ability to use them should we so choose. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Charlie. Second? Second. Thank you, Steve. Any questions? Yeah, here it is. Too many papers today. <laughs> Okay, any questions, discussion? In, in the past, I'm assuming this type of arrangement's been in place. What has been the experience with the pricing and services that are available through this channel as opposed to dealing directly? Um, because it's primarily for procurement assistance, mm -hmm. um, so it would be for um, developing bid specifications, um, managing bids and things like that. Um, we have not used their services since I have been mayor, so I can't really speak to our past experience. Charlie, do you know? Not off the top of my head. Often, um, depending on the project, um, often the engineer will manage this process mm -hmm. as well. Um, but this just gives us an option should we so mm -hmm. choose. Our engineer helped us with the bid process for the sludge removal. Mm -hmm. um, we did not use the county services for that one. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the next is, um, so, uh, no, that's not it. Do you have the resolution, or is this to be a motion for the? Okay. Um, so, <laughs> yes, you are. Um, so, um, what I'm looking for is a motion to approve um, a sewer EDU reassessment. So, um, 7472 South Broadway um, was initially assessed as three EDUs. It was one parcel. There are now two parcels. So there was a lot line adjustment between when the um, original assessment was laid out and now. And so I'm asking for um, a motion to reassess, to split the three EDUs bet evenly between the two new parcels. Not evenly. Oh, by building. Two to Good Hudson and... Two to the original one, the 43677, and one to 435669. This parcel is the Mid Hudson Federal, Mid Hudson Valley Federal Credit Union, um, and that parcel was split. So it covers the bank building, Lucoli Restaurant, and also the um, the office building just to the south. And so this would split it by building and Lucoli's and the bank is part of one parcel and the other building is part of another. Otherwise, we are not allowed to, we are not currently authorized to bill uh, the new parcel. So may I have a motion to make that reassessment? So moved. Thank you, Charlie. Second? Second. Thank you, Kim. Any um, questions, discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, 2023-2024 uh, septic tank and grease trap pump out hauling contract. We are authorizing, I need a motion to authorize me to sign the contract that we have developed um, for the septic tank and grease trap pump out and hauling contract. Um, we accepted the bids um, at our last meeting. Superior Sanitation was the low bidder, um, the, the responsible low bidder for that, and now I just need authorization to sign the contract. So moved. Thank you, Steve. Second? I'll second it. Thank you, Charlie. Any questions or discussion? And just to clarify, this is a contract that goes from April of this year through the end of May next year, so that these contracts will be on a, a um, fiscal year basis going forward. I do have a question. Yeah. Will they roll over at the fiscal year or will there be an opportunity to reevaluate and possibly receive new bids? Uh, the latter. We will have learned a lot between now and then. Um, so I think it, it's, it's a, it'll be an opportunity to reassess Great. for sure. Um, any other questions, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, now comes the fun part, is the reorganization. Oh, that's that, add that, here it is. Okay, so we have a resolution. Um, since we just had elections in March and we have two new um, trustees, and I guess arguably I've been elected for a full term for the first time. Um, we have a reorganization resolution that we um, need to do. And so I think I'll just read it. Um, Whereas the Board of Trustees has received and reviewed a various annual reorganization documents, including meeting schedule, office newspaper, and the mayor's appointees, officers, designations with any new appointments listed. Um, mayor must appoint with board approval the offices of clerk, treasurer, Deputy Clerk, Associate Justice, and members of boards. Um, blah, blah, blah. All claims, yeah, there's good stuff in here, but it's general stuff. Um, the board is aware, whereas the board is aware of the existing ethics code and procurement code as embodied in our local law and is reminded of same. You all have copies of that in your packets. Um, and intends to complete the annual reorganization with consolidated voting and move to other business. Now, therefore, be it resolved. The board approves the mayor's new appointments as listed below. Village treasurer, Lori Urban. Uh, it's a, officially a two-year term, and so your term ends April 7th, 2025. Doesn't mean you'll be done, but it's your current term. Uh, Associate Justice, uh, one-year term, Thomas Manfield. So that term ends uh, April 8th, 2024. Planning board, uh, we have uh, one, uh, one new appointment or reappointment, if you will, is uh, Beth Pagano as chair. Her term will end in t April of 2028. Uh, a new uh, appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Kristen Lux, um, and her term will end in 2026. The Village Green Committee is um, Kim Bradley Rickert as liaison, uh, David Pearson, Kathy Pearson, and Brian Ferran. Um, just a comment, we can always add people to committees if there's ever anyone who's interested in joining any one of these committees. Uh, the events committee is Melkorka Kiarval as the liaison. I'm on that committee. Amy Smith, Gabrielle Melton, Jeffrey Walsh, Nora Feld Feldhun Feldhusen, excuse me. Um, that committee is actively working towards Hard Scrabble Day, which is September 23rd, 2023. Public Spaces Initiative. Um, Steve Appenzeller is the liaison. We've got Perry Allen. Ash Bradley Reichert is the chair. Paulina Malik Milliken. Nicole Rogers. Betsy Brower and Linda DeGasper. The Human Relations Committee is Mel Karka Kiarval as the liaison. Amy Frost Boyd. David Marcus and Weiss. And Renee Zhang, who is the chair. Com Communications Committee is Mel Korka Kiarval as liaison. I'm on that committee, and Lauren Cunningham is also on that committee. And the final committee we have is the Main Street Committee, Mel Korka Kiarval as the liaison. I'm on that committee. 
uh, Amy Smith, Betsy Brower, Ainsley La Silvia, Thomas La Silvia, and Kristen Larson. The board designates the following institutions as depositories of all monies received by the village treasurer. Thank you for coming. Um, clerk and receiver of taxes, uh, Key Bank and M&T Bank. The board will approve reimbursement to such officers and employees at the current federal IRS rate per mile in effect at the time of the trip. The board authorizes payment in advance of audit of claims for public utility services, postage, freight, and express charges. All such claims must be presented at the next regular meeting for audit, and the claimant and the officer incurring or approving the claims are jointly and severally liable for any amount the Board of Trustees disallows. The board acknowledges review and familiarity with the ethics code and procurement code of the Village of Red Hook. The board appoints the Daily Freeman, also known as Media News Group, as the official newspaper. Renew and renews the meeting schedule as follows. All meetings are held in Village Hall and are open to the public. Village Board of Trustees, second Monday at 7 p.m. Village Board Workshops, fourth Thursday at 7 p.m. Village of Red Hook Court, uh, Justice Court, first Wednesday at 6 p.m. Village of Red Hook Criminal Court, third Wednesday at 4 p.m. Planning Board, second Thursday, 7 p.m. And Zoning Board of Appeals, fourth Thursday, 7 p.m. I need a motion to accept this reorganization resolution. So moved. Thank you, Kim. Second? Second. Thank you, Steve. This is resolution number nine. 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 Uh, any questions, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful, thank you. Good work being done. I do not have any budget adjustments. Mm -hmm. Ran out of time. Um, noting the next meetings, uh, the village workshop is April 27th, and the village board meeting is May 8th. The next village board meeting is May 8th. Um, and now we are on to department or, and or committee reports, and it starts with Treasurer Urban for the treasurer's report. Uh, hello, everyone. The treasurer's report is as follows. Uh, the account balances as of 331-2023 are general fund $729,675.73, water fund $304,637.72, payroll clearing account $31,701.25, Sewer Fund, $50,812.34. Hard Scrabble Account, $8,210.60. The Village Green has $7,674.32. Health Insurance, $5,674.24. And in Petty Cash, we have $60.83. The balances in our reserve checking accounts are um, fire Department, $5,047.60. Police, $14,626.54. USDA, $134,413.56. Highway, $26,259.24. Snow Reserve, $3,288.59. Tower Reserve, $17,760.63. Unemployment, $4,556.75. Court reserve, $3,307.76. And our office reserve is $975.22. Lastly, monthly expenses for March were general fund, $149,846.89. The water fund, $30,646.16. Out of the payroll clearing account, $2,351.62. And um, in sewer, $52,081.22. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, I need a motion to accept the treasurer's report. So moved. Thank you, Steve. I need a second. Second. Thank you, Charlie. Um, any discussions or questions? Hearing none, all in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, Laurie. Uh, next up is me. Um, I have that. I have the police report uh, for the month of March. There were 315 incidents um, in the village of Red Hook. There were 209. Of those, there were 105 water tower security checks. Um, in the town of Red Hook, there were 87 incidents. And in the village of Tivoli, there were 19. Uniform traffic tickets, there were 95. In the village of Red Hook, there were 43. In the town of Red Hook, there were 45. And in the village of Tivoli, there were seven. Parking tickets, uh, in the village of Red Hook, there were 12. In the village of Tivoli, there were 48. In the town of Red Hook, there were none. And there were four arrests in the month of March. The village of Red Hook, there were two. Town of Red Hook, there was one. And the village of Tivoli, there was one. Um, and before I leave the police report, um, as we have discussed before, um, we have two new trustees. Um, we have discussed the, the um, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? The structure of the police department with all of the additional contracts that we have added um, over the last year, uh, last couple of years. Um, the, our village police department is providing patrol and court services to the town of Red Hook. Um, this year we added um, both patrol and court for the village of Tivoli. We also um, have increased our contract with the school system for SRO a year ago um, we provided one SRO, and this year we're providing two SROs. Um, and so what we've discussed is the possibility of adding a level to the police department, and that would be a lieutenant level, um, and um, which would allow for a lieutenant, a, su a sergeant, and the patrol officers. We currently have four full-time officers, and we have six uh, part-time officers. We're always looking for additional um, quality part-time officers. That is an ongoing um, activity. Um, what I would like to do is to ask for a motion to authorize me to negotiate with um, the police union, which is um, UPSEU, um, to, to determine a um, a potential pay level for a lieutenant position. Um, this is not approving the position. This is just giving me the authority to continue to explore um, what that what that would look like and what the what the dollars would be um, from a pay rate standpoint. Um, and I I'm looking for a motion. You don't have to, but um, would be uh, so moved. Thanks, Steve. Um, is there a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Charlie. Any um, any questions? Discussion? Do you have an estimated timeline for those discussions at this point? Looking to do that over the next several weeks. So I'd have a report for you at the workshop meeting the end of April. Great. With the um, contract layout, how those positions will be filled, whether it's appointment or application or? Yes, I can clarify that. Um, lot, yeah, I'll, I can clarify that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, the fire department, I do not have an updated report. Um, and in terms of personnel, um, for those of you, I think you've all met, but um, I think since we last met, we have hired Angela Dordis, who is our account clerk who handles um, a variety of items, including um, payroll and human resources issues um, and the like. And she's, uh, she's jumped in feet first, and uh, we're very happy to have her on board. Uh, and that is it for me. I will come back at the end. I've got a couple of things that I will cover. So with that, uh, Charlie, take it away. Uh, do, you, uh, do you have the materials management? Did I give that to you? Yes. 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 Okay. Would you mind reading that for now, and then we will adjust our yeah. assignments for the next meeting? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. For the month 
of March, the Materials Management Report. Um, so we collected 1.03 tons of commingled, 0.34 tons of cardboard, and 0.92 tons of paper for a total recycling of 2.29 tons. Uh, we also collected 4.44 tons of garbage, uh, and we sold $2,745 worth of garbage tags. Um, so, total costs were for disposing of that garbage and, and a fuel surcharge was $532.36. And I'm pleased to report we did not have any contaminated recycling costs Great. in the past month, which is always good to see. Yes, it is. Uh, then I also have the uh, water treatment facilities monthly report. Uh, and so during the month of March, the water treatment facility treated 7,043,700 total gallons, which is an average of 227,200 gallons per day. Uh, that's a slight uptick uh, from the last month and the month before. Um, we'll just keep an eye on that. We also sent out uh, three samples for uh, bacteriological analysis and they all came back absent for uh, those bacteria that we test for, coliform and E. coli, so that's always reassuring. And then during the month of March, the water treatment plant used 74 gallons of sodium hypochlorite, which comes to an average daily use of 2.4 gallons per day. And uh, that's it for the water facilities report. I mean, there's some, I think we're, we're picking away well at, uh, you know, uh, deficiencies or, or issues with the system. Uh, we're still looking to uh, fix that or address SCADA, SCADA issues. Yes, and the, the true update is going to come with the WIA grant project. Right. That's actually the, the number one on the list. Um, so right. once, once we finalize our financing, then we'll be able to move forward with the SCADA update. That's excellent. Back. Does that do it for you? That does it for me. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, okay, so um, Trustee Curaval is otherwise occupied. Um, so I'm going to read her reports. Uh, Red Hook Together. Red Hook Together met at 5.30 on April 6th at the VFW. There was no theme discussion set, and the dozen or so attendees were encouraged to share updates of their organizations in a roundtable forum. Red Hook Town Economic Development Committee. Bi-weekly meetings have been taking place at Village Hall on alternating Wednesdays at 8.40 a.m. March 22nd's meeting hosted Melanie Rotkamp president of Dutchess County Tourism, who presented an update on the state of Dutchess County Tourism and new programs and initiatives they have been working on. Village of Red Hook Communications Committee. The Communication Committee uh, meets the f every first Wednesday of the month at 1.30 in Village Hall Conference Room. This month's meeting was not held due to travel of some members. Village of Red Hook Hardscrabble Events Committee. The events committee meets on the third Monday of each month at 6 p.m. at Village Hall. We had a productive meeting on March 20th where we discussed the upcoming Friday Neighbors Nights on May 19th, July 14th, and September 22nd, as well as timelines for this year's Hard Scrabble, which is September 23rd, 2023. If you would like to sponsor a picnic table, volunteer for an event, or sign up for a booth on Hard Scrabble Day, please contact us by email at events at redhooknyvillage.org. Village of Red Hook Human Relations Committee. The Human Relations Committee meets every th first Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. in Village Hall Conference Room. This month's meeting took place March 15th. We are happy to announce that Renee Zhang has, been, has, been ex has accepted the position as the chair of the committee. We are currently working on three projects, a pamphlet on tools available when you witness a bias incident, the Inside Out We Are Neighbors Portrait Project, and the Village of Red Hook Indigenous History Project. Look for our portrait sessions at various local public events this spring. Red Hook Public Library Report. 
The Red Hook Public Library Board has public meetings on the third Thursday of each month. The next meeting is Thursday, April 20th at 6.30 in the library's third floor community room. Prompted by the public comments at the last Village Board me meeting, I attended the <coughs> Red Hook Public Library Board of Trustees general meeting on March 16th. Over two dozen public commenters talked about their experiences as users of Red Hook Public Library, explaining how their active use of the library is what motivated them to come speak to the board. The main themes expressed were the following. Concern about the lack of transparency in the board's decisions on hiring new leadership and their choice of, for interim director. Requests for minutes and budget documents that are missing from the library's website and public binder and worries over the future of programs and community partnerships that were most meaningful to library users. There are three main outcomes to report from that general meeting. One was greater awareness on the part of board members and the public that the 2023 budget adopted in November had not been made public. Concerned by the library board's inability to produce the approved budget, I placed a FOIA request for it. The interim director then shared a document he said he believes is the budget approved in November. Additionally, his email indicated that the library's newly hired bookkeeper, Rose Woodworth, CPA, is still working to make cha necessary changes to the 2023 budget. Thus, a final budget cannot yet be shared with the public. Though the library board gave no specific explanation about the nature of the necessary changes, the minutes from the Finance Committee's January 17th meeting cite several issues regarding the library's accounting methods formatting of financial statements, and use of depreciation. Presumably, the changes needed for the 2023 budget relate to the past errors in how the library's finances were managed and reported. Another outcome from the March 16th general meeting was a suggestion by town resident and local farmer Sam Rose that the library board have a third party review their hiring process. Trustee, trustee Josh Bardfield proposed a motion to put the idea past legal counsel. Thus far, no subsequent committee meeting minutes indicate whether this has been done. The third outcome relates to the continued pattern of library board documents missing from the public record. The board vice president attended the March 16 meeting via Zoom, and the interim manager told the assembled attendees that he was recording the meeting. However, the rec recording was not shared. The interim manager's response to a FOIA request for it was that the recording does not exist. Minutes from the meeting that were subsequently posted omit how extensive the public comment was, as well as the questions about the 2023 budget. Finally, the library board search for a new, le new leadership continues on March 22nd at what is described in the minutes as the inaugural meeting of the personnel committee. The six board members present voted to offer a part-time position for 15 to 20 weeks to the former director. At a supplementary meeting of the board on April 4th, I requested an update on the search for this report. The board secretary informed me it was an emergency meeting regarding staffing issues and the search for a new director. Board President O'Shea added that they had no updates for the public at the time. The board went directly into executive session with the assurance that they did not plan any public votes as a result of their discussions in executive session. Following the meeting, I requested confirmation that no decisions were made after the executive session. The interim manager and board declined to answer, citing their right to withhold the information until April 18. Per New York State law, 14 days is the maximum wait until draft minutes must be shared publicly. That is, um, those are Melkorka's reports. Um, that got all of those. Um, Trustee Bradley Record, would you like to share the Village Green reports? Sure. Re Village Green report. Thank you. The current balances of the Village Green Committee's related budget accounts as of March 31st are as follows. Community beautification contractual expense balance negative $103.22 with a $1,000 grant reward from the New York State Urban Forestry Council forthcoming. The Shade Tree contractual expense balance is negative $800 and the Village Green Committee checking account balance is $7,674.32. A Village Green Committee meeting was held on March 7th, 2023 in the Red Hook Village Building. David Pearson, Kathy Pearson, Brian Foran, and Brent Kowalczyk attended. And the items discussed including tree planting sites for the 2023 annual spring planting Arbor Day celebration, 
Tree sites are being finalized. A minimum of 10 trees are required to be ordered from the nursery. The Village Green Committee members are contacting residences to seek permission to plant trees on their adjacent village street right-of-ways prior to March 19th placement at the March 19th order placement deadline. And the annual spring planting day and Arbor Day celebrations are tentatively scheduled for April 22nd, 2023. The actual date is to be confirmed pending delivery of our trees. We can confirm that date. It is April 22nd. It is April 22nd. A uh, letter of March 2023 was received by the Arbor Day Foundation notifying the Village of Red Hook earned recognition as a 2022 Tree City USA. This is the 21st year that the Village of Red Hook and the Village Green Committee earned this recognition. As stated in the letter, residents of the Village of Red Hook should be proud to live in a community that makes the planting and care of trees a priority. Thanks to David Pearson for preparing and submitting this year's Tree City USA application. Residents and businesses interested in having a tree or trees planted on their adjacent Village Street or New York State Highway right-of-ways volunteering for planting days or sponsoring a Village Green Committee beautification project may contact David Pearson, Kathy Pearson, Brian Foran, or the Village Clerk. Or Thank trustee. You. Or trustee me, trustee Bradley Ricard. Bradley Ricard, exactly. Um, and just to confirm, so April 22nd is the spring planting day and um, meeting at 9 a.m. Do we meet? Do you know where the meeting? I can't remember whether it's at Village Hall or whether it's at Abraham's Park. I believe it's Abraham's, but I can confirm. Okay. Later. Anyone who's interested in volunteering, feel free to give us a call here at, at Village Hall. We will confirm for you. Uh, thank you. And uh, Trustee Appenzeller, I believe you have the building and zoning reports. I do. The monthly zoning and planning report for March is as follows. There were eight building permits issued, five certificates of occupancy were issued, and five certificates of compliance issued, and there was one municipal search. Uh, in orders to remedy, there were 15 uh, for complaints related to the illuminated lighting signs throughout the village, and there were three orders to remedy related to property maintenance. There were no stop work orders, no court appearances, and six fire inspections. There were three complaints, uh, 26 Cambridge, related to a tree issue, which was remedied, 56 East Market Street, and that was referred to DOT, and 15 Amherst Street, there was a property maintenance complaint, and that is pending. Um, planning board actions on March 9th at the meeting, there was a site plan application for 3 St. John Street. That was tabled to the next meeting, which will be on April 13th. There was a public hearing held on a lot line application for 7617 North Broadway, and the lot line approval was granted to the applicant. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals at the March 23rd meeting, there was an interpretation appeal application for 35 and 39 Garden Street, which was withdrawn, and there was an interpretation appeal application for 25 Fisk Street, that was tabled to the following meeting, which will be on April 26th, and a public hearing um, is set for this application on that same date, April 26th at 7 p.m. Um, and for building permits, there was $1,476 in fees collected during the month of March. Great, thank you very much. And I have, um, even though former Deputy Mayor Brent Kowalczuk is not here. He um, completed his March monthly reports. So I have a couple more of his reports. He did the Village Green report. Um, he did the Highway Department report, which I have here. So restrictions and prohibitions regarding the village's seasonal all-night parking law expired for the 2022-23 season on March 31st, 2023. The Village Highway Department will resume brush pickup during the month of April. Um, that uh, they resumed actually last week. Um, pickup of brush leaves and yard debris will be scheduled for the first Monday of every month, pending weather conditions and scheduling. Um, key for those who uh, pay attention, we're doing once a month this year and not twice a month. Um, the village uh, board of trustees will confirm the actual dates and announce the dates at future meetings. Oh, for yard pickup um, and will be posted on the village website. Um, you can assume it's the first week of the month, every month, until at least through October. 
There was no revenue generated from the sale of scrap metal during the month of March. Total revenue generated from the sale of scrap metal in uh, fiscal year 22-23 is $3,291. Since the inception of the scrap metal recycling program in September 2007, probably a Brent Kowalczyk idea, um, $47,154.46 has been uh, generated. Proceeds from this program go toward the purchase of tools and equipment for the village highway, water, and materials management departments. Residents and businesses interested in donating scrap metal may contact the village highway department, 845-758-8600, or the village clerk's office, 845-758-1081. Highway department personnel will assist property owners by picking up scrap metal upon request. And I have the sewer project update. There's a lot of detail in here. Um, we had a sewer project meeting on March 10th and March 24th. Um, and all the, all the detail is in here. The most important thing that happened uh, on March 30th um, of 2023 is the project received substantial completion which means that the core of the project is complete, which is extraordinary, yeah. given how long it took to get there. Um, so the, um, the contractors, so Carver Construction is still here. There are punch list items, there, as, as with any construction project, there are always uh, loose ends that are currently being, um, being tidied up, but the most important current work that's being done is the restoration. So currently they're working on uh, regrading adding topsoil, um, soon they'll be, adding, um, they'll be adding grass seed, and then as soon as the uh, paving companies open up and start selling um, paving material, they will start preparing and, and doing uh, the repaving to uh, finalize the restoration. So we are in the final phases of the construction project. So I think it's highly appropriate that the substantial completion was achieved the day before um, Deputy Mayor Brent Kowalczyk's last, um, last day on the job. Um, there is also the um, water distribution system maintenance and improvement project. Um, we had a meeting on March 10th and March 24th uh, in the village building, and we met with Delaware Engineering. We d it was, uh, the status of the WIA project was discussed. Um, <coughs> We also discussed that um, 40 water meters, mostly meter heads, have been replaced in 2023, but in, from between 2022 and 2023. Um, the possibility of creating a new project to replace all existing radio read meter heads with cell read meter heads and, the invent and an inventory of lead service lines connections was discussed. Um, we talked about water project phase three, um, which has had some preliminary approvals, um, which includes a $500,000 grant that has all the regulatory requirements. Um, that was discussed. Lots more needs to be discussed um, before that goes forward. Uh, we also discussed the Anderson Commons um, is uh, renewing, is, is gearing back up. That's a project that was approved, site plan was approved about 10 years ago, I think. Um, so working on that. And then March 24th, uh, Delaware Engineering um, met with me um, on, uh, and we discussed additional items. And I'm not as di diligent as Brent, so I, I don't have a written report on that. Um, and then going forward, the Town of Red Hook uh, Zoning Review Committee has, no lo has not been meeting for quite a while, and so we are no longer to report on that until that becomes, um, until that, that committee is, is uh, reactivated. The Community Preservation Fund Advisory Board, um, our, our new um, liaison is going to be uh, Charlie Lang. So he will be reporting on that, as, um, as well as the uh, Salt Hill Watershed Community um, team, group, committee. Um, I guess community is what they are. And so uh, Charlie Lang is also going to become the 
Liaison for that, the Northern Duchess Alliance Executive Committee that hasn't met in a while, but I will become the, um, the liaison for the village. And, um, and we will be reactivating the Village of Red Hook Zoning Review Committee uh, going forward with um, Steve Appenzeller working on that with me. And then Village of Red Hook Public Services Initiative, um, our new liaison for that is uh, Steve Appenzeller. And so he will uh, be reporting on that at the next meeting. So I think that's all of the committee reports. Um, and now we're on to, did I forget anything? I don't think so. Um, we're on to general business. Um, there were just two things that I wanted to mention. Um, you'll note there's a sign out front that talks about the e-waste recycling day. That's on April 22nd. Um, and uh, so take a look. There's information on our website. Um, it is a town sponsored event. Um, so, town and village sponsored event. Um, so if you have any any e-waste, uh, now is the time to think about it and uh, and dispose of it appropriately. Um, and then the other thing that I will just mention that um, we've had a variety of um, discussions around uh, various types of animals beyond um, beyond. Um, uh, typical household pets, and so we will be reviewing. And um, looking at our code, it is not as clear as it could be. Um, so we, we, will be, we will be reviewing um, some additional code language around that um, as, as we go forward in the future, um, probably in the next month or two. Probably next month we'll have something to, to review and look at and discuss and uh, have public comment about. Um, because I think it's 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 time to have more clear um, a more clear code as to what we allow and what we don't allow and how we want that to how we want that to happen what kind of village we see ourselves as wanting um, I that's it for me does anybody else have any other general business comments just one item to add uh, the 22nd of April is a busy day it's Earth Day and there will also be the Repair Cafe at the Red Hill Community Center, 56 Fifth Street, and it's an opportunity for anyone to bring their broken but beloved items, have it repaired by community volunteers. So everyone's welcome to bring those items. And if you have skills repairing electronics, fabric, wood, any type of um, skills you'd like to share with your neighbors, you know, please sign up as a volunteer as well. And you can contact me for more information. And Steve, is, is, uh, do you have a particular skill that things you'll be repairing? Um, I kind of fill in and help people in the things that so you are were, easy. You <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Gluing things together is my, my it's forte. It's your forte. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Um, any other comments, things to share? Uh, hearing none, um, I just want to thank you all for a very productive meeting, um, and uh, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second? I'll second that. Thank you, Charlie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye.